Hello and welcome to American History Freshman Year Online. I'm trying this new vodcast thing that I talked about in class, so I hope you enjoy it and I hope it uh, helps us out a little bit. First of all, definition of a vodcast, you can see it pop up there. It's a video on demand, basically. Uh, the good thing about what I think about this is that we're going to be able to cover in about 15 minutes everything that we would normally cover in a 50 minute class time. You can pause this video, you can rewind this video as much as you want to. Um, we will be covering again 15.1 questions 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, and 10. Um, it says there number one. We will go over number one. Number one's already been answered for you. We'll just use it kind of as an example, as a way to get started. Again, the purpose, this allows for you to come into class with some background knowledge, or what teachers call background knowledge. You kind of already know ahead of time what we're going to discuss. Then when you get to class, we can do more fun stuff, more activities, more group work, more individual projects and things like that. So, let's... Uh, Let's go. This picture should look pretty familiar to you, the New Deal program. Uh, you can get the, uh, the gist of the cartoon. We're having a new deal, and you can see that it's uh, four aces. That's not a bad hand if you're playing cards. Uh, the notes that you're about to use were given to you in class today. If for some reason you've lost them, go to the Nixa School's website, find my class page, go to social studies and, and find my class page. Then go to multimedia blog, click on multi multimedia blog, and click on the live binder. In the live binder, uh, you'll see several tabs on the top. You want to find the tab that says the New Deal. Click on that. That will open up the New Deal uh, subject of that binder. And then you want to look for the pages that say Chapter 15 Flip Notes. And then you'll just pr have to print off um, whatever you need if for some reason you have lost your notes. The first New Deal program we're going to talk about is the Emergency Banking Relief Act. The answers in your flip notes have already been filled in for you, but we're going to use these as an example. Uh, the Banking Act was a, uh, the very first program introduced by President Roosevelt. You can see the uh, purpose there. It authorized the Treasury Department to inspect and close banks. Well, why did the banks need to be closed? Um, why did they need inspecting? Well, the biggest problem of the of the Great Depression initially was that the banks were failing. People were rushing on the banks trying to get their money. They did not trust the banks. So Roosevelt, in his first few days of being uh, president, closed every bank and created a banking holiday. And that at that time, the banks were inspected, and only those banks that were strong enough or could support um, opening back up to the public were then open. And then what's the goal of this, the long-term goal? Well, to do what was necessary. Why did the people pull their money out of the banks? They didn't trust the bank. So they had to, uh, This the goal of this Relief Act is to restore public confidence in the banks themselves. Roosevelt was the first president to use the radio to his advantage. The radio was something new in the 1920s. And so Roosevelt's known for what uh, we call in history as fireside chats. And whether or not he was next to a fire, sitting in his living room talking to the American people, I don't know, who, to, who knows? But they're called fireside chats to give the indication, give the impression that he's sitting in the living room with you, just talking to you as if you guys are best friends and just reassuring you that everything is going to be okay. Okay, on to the, the next one, question number two or program number two, the Glass-Steagall Banking Act of 1933. The purpose, you want to write this down, and if you need to pause the video, this is the great thing about this podcast, pause the video and write down the purpose. It established the FDIC. Well, what's the FDIC? It stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the key there is insurance. The FDIC guarantees your money. It places an insurance policy on your money. Well, why was this needed? Well, when the banks failed, people lost their money. They couldn't get into the banks. They couldn't get any of the savings that they had, had, had already stored in the bank, and that really turned the people against the banks. And again, to restore the confidence in the banks, there had to be some guarantee. Today, the FDIC operates in every bank, and it guarantees individuals' money, individual accounts, up to $250,000. Uh, that means if some reason, for some reason, the bank fails, whatever money you have in the bank, you're guaranteed to get that back up to $250,000. Now, some of the more wealthy people in our country today use this to their advantage. They will place $250,000 in Bank A, $250,000 in Bank B. $250,000 in another bank, you, you get the idea. That way, if something were to happen, they wouldn't lose all $1 million or $2 million or $50 million, whatever they have at one time. So it's just smart financial planning. Again, the goal, 
to do what was needed to restore the public confidence in the banks, get people to put their money back in the banks, because without that, without money in circulation, your economy doesn't work. Here's a good cartoon I like. It, it, it really exemplifies uh, the FDIC and the problems that face the people once the banks failed. You can see the photo, the, excuse me, the uh, nameplate, this guy, he's a victim of bank failure. And, you know, happy little squirrel here is asking him, why didn't you save money for the bank or for the future? And, of course, this guy did what good people do. They did save money. But with the bank failures, the bank shut down, he was unable to get his money. Again, the FDIC protects against people losing their money. And uh, I don't know if you go to the bank with your parents. I don't even know if your parents, who goes to the, in the banks anymore? Uh, most people use the drive throughs or drive up windows or ATMs. But every bank is required to have this symbol uh, somewhere on their doors or on their buildings to indicate that they are a federally protected and insured bank. Next is the Federal Securities Act. And the purpose behind this act is that it required large corporations to provide complete information about their company. Um, today, it's called transparency. If, if I invest in Walmart, Walmart has to send me information about how their company is doing. This was designed to, be, uh, to protect investors because right before the stock market crash, a lot of uh, inside trading was going on. And what that means is people in the business knew that the business was not doing well, and so they were getting rid of their stock options before the company failed. Well, to normal Jane Doe and John Doe investor who didn't know what was going on, that's what caused them to lose so much money in the stock market crash. Again, the goal, common sense, people got out of the stock market because they didn't trust the stock market. So the goal of the Federal Securities Act is to restore confidence in the stock market. Another action of the Federal Securities Act is the creation of what's called the Securities and Exchange Commission. You can see the seal of the SEC. This investigates insider trading. And I think if uh, you think back to the Great Depression talks, uh, you may remember hearing about Martha Stewart having to go to jail because of her um, involvement in insider trading. Well, she was investigated by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Number four in your notes, the National Industrial Recovery Act. The National Industrial Recovery Act created several programs. It was an act to create job programs, programs like the PWA, the CWA, the NRA. I'm not going to get into those right now because those will come up later in this lesson and in another lesson later, later on. But the NRIRA established labor standards. Basically, it allowed for industries to be more equitable to eliminate that gap between the wealthy and the poor, uh, what we call today the 1%, uh, where it's believed that only 1% of our um, citizenship, 1% of our population controls 99% of the wealth. Well, the NIRA was designed to eliminate that. And you can see the long-term goal there, to ensure fair business practices and promote industrial growth. Now, there's no photo to go with this slide, um, again, because the NIRA simply created programs for employment and we'll have more photos about those programs later on. Now up until this point everything that Roosevelt is doing sounds very very similar to what Hoover planned to do. Strengthen the government in areas where it needed to be strengthened. Uh, close down a few banks that needed to be closed. Create a few job programs to get people back up on their feet. It's with number eight the Federal Emergency Relief Administration where Roosevelt veers off the path that Hoover swore he would not go down. Hoover was uh, just adamantly opposed to any kind of direct relief, any kind of handouts. The purpose of the FERA was to provide that direct relief, what we would call essentially welfare programs today. This program set aside $500 million for direct relief, giving food to the needy, clothing to the needy. Half of that money was for food and clothing. The states would get half of the money that the states would get would go to food and clothing. The other half went to support of job programs within a state. And it was on a one to three ratio. What I mean is one dollar to three dollars. So if a state program, for every state program rather, that contributed three dollars to a work relief program, the federal government would contribute one dollar to that. As far as the goal is concerned, the plan provided for basic needs, giving food to the needy, giving clothing to the needy. But at the same time, the work programs created a sense of 
self-esteem or reassured the uh, individual who didn't want that handout that there was work out there for them. A lot of people would rather go to work to earn their money than stand in line and wait for food and clothing to be handed to them. Here is a photo of a clothing bank and people just show up with their needs and they would be given whatever it was that they needed. Another political cartoon, These, this political cartoon focuses on the criticism of the New Deal programs. You can see we got a little cutout shot of the well that Franklin Roosevelt is using. Um, below the surface, this well has plenty of leaks. It's leaking all over the place in reference to the fact that New Deal programs are not working. Um, above the ground level, the well itself has leaks. Well, where is the money coming from for this New Deal pump? You can see it's on the backs of taxpayers. 1,000 millions more and Roosevelt keeps saying I hope this one will work and you can see Mr. Taxpayer doing all the work. The Public Works Administration is part of the National Industrial Recovery Act mentioned earlier. The purpose of the PWA was job creation pure and simple um, not a handout. This was create jobs, put men to work, build up their self-esteem. Now, not to be confused, the PWA should not be confused with the WPA, which does come up later. The PWA is responsible for building schools and community buildings. You might want to make a note of that in the column in your notes. PWA, schools, and community buildings. Again, what's the long-term goal? Reduce unemployment. What was the problem with the Great Depression? 25% unemployment. So the PWA was designed to find jobs, put people to work. Here's an example of public housing, a building that was created, built by the PWA. Here's a dam in Oregon, again, PWA. And then finally, a school out in Wichita, Kansas. The PWA is known for building schools. And finally, the CWA was created, again, by the NIRA. This program was created because the PWA, just previously mentioned, did not work, or it failed to work. It created jobs for a short period of time, then those jobs ran out. So the Roosevelt had to do something, so the CWA was created. The CWA created 4 million jobs in the winter of 1933 and 1934. These jobs focused on building schools and paying teachers' salaries in rural areas, as well as building roads, over a half a million miles of roads during that time period. And then the goal, just like the PWA, reduce unemployment. Plain and simple, give someone a job, let them earn their money. There's a photo of some young men out. You can see they're clearing off the side of the road, widening the road a little bit. Again, CWA is known for building roads. And the CWA is also known for paying teacher salaries and building schools. And here you can see children playing on the playground. And that concludes the first podcast. Uh, hopefully you were able to get everything. If not, the beauty of this, go back and uh, rewind. You know, Press pause. Watch it 10 times if you need to. Whatever it takes. Anyhow, get this done. When you come to class tomorrow, we're going to enjoy a little, uh, little fun activity.